Yeah, we're recording. Welcome to episode five of the Okanagan Real Estate Podcast, your source to buying, selling, and living in the Okanagan. Hosting with me is Marika the Closer Soleil, your modern day superwoman and superstar real estate agent. She's coming to you live from Kelowna and also services the West Kelowna and Lake Country area. And I'm your host, Raina Kucheran, your local Penticton and South Okanagan realtor. Today, we're excited to have on with us Daryl Ruder. Daryl is not only an amazing realtor with Royal LePage, but also has an extraordinary heart for giving back to his community. He has been awarded the Realtors Care Award of Central Okanagan and is an integral member of 100 Good Men, also known as Heroes, I think now. So welcome to the show, Daryl. Thank you. Sorry I didn't get the memo we had to dress up. <laughs> no, we totally appreciate you um, being here. And thanks for the intro, Raina. I love it when Raina does our intro. <laughs> I know, Marika the Closer. I, I want a cool nickname like that. <laughs> I was trying to think of one for you. <laughs> we'll have one That's by awesome. the end of the show. <laughs> yes. Perfect. When we promote it, we'll have one for you. <laughs> deal, deal. So how are you doing, Daryl? You're you're in central Kelowna. So is it snowing there? Because where I am, kind of by the mall, it's... um. It's definitely starting to snow and starting pretty pretty good out there. Yeah, I'm right down the bottom of Knox. It's definitely snowing up at the top of Knox. It's just like kind of randomly spitting a little bit here. It's just trying yeah. to snow. I think this yeah. is it. I think we're going to get a big snowfall now. Um, yeah, I've got a light dusting in Penticton here up on the mountain. And I, I think there's probably Perfect. more coming. <laughs> well, Christmas yeah. is coming. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Christmas music on and everything's all set up so I could be like, you know, cozy doing the podcast today. Are you ready for Christmas, Daryl? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you the have baby the of the family. To buy for, right? I got the dogs to buy for. I'm the baby of the family, and it works out really well because everybody. I've played this along my whole life really well that I'm incapable of doing things. So my parents <laughs> and my sister, they all buy presents for each other from me, and I just have to pay the money for it. So it actually works out perfect. <laughs> same That's like same with like. <laughs> yeah, Christmas dinner, like I'm not allowed to touch anything. I just sit on the couch and watch football or something. And it, it's, awesome. I got, it's it's like my secret. <laughs> well, we all know you're very capable of doing lots. <laughs> Can you, do? you? you guys went and got your tree yesterday. Yeah, we um, went in, uh, in the back country, like up behind our house. Um, it's called Idleback Lake. It's quite far out there, but we drove about 20 minutes up the logging road chopped down two trees one for me and my husband and one for our in-laws um it took us a long time to find the right trees and I don't know if we were super happy with them in the end. <laughs> I hear you. It's more about the experience and they know you have the smell of the real tree in your house so it's so nice I didn't oh, want... I love that yeah and um our friends ended up picking our tree for us and it was like <laughs> it smelled great it was nice and wide but very scarce but it's yeah, still, like the branches you know, are super thin. Super thin. <laughs> yeah, but you can make it look so good, right? Decorations, right? That's all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> um, okay, so what's going on in real estate this week? I my numbers I just checked the last seven days. It's looking like we had 80 listed, 85 sold. So it's still, you know, still pretty much the same as what's been going on in the last few weeks in the central or in the Kelowna area. What about you in Penticton? Similar? Yeah, in the South Okanagan, there was 68 new homes to market this week and 67 sold. Um, wow. So better news for buyers, I guess, this week than past weeks where we were seeing sales exceeding the new homes coming to market. Um, but yeah, your average single family home this week in Penticton sold for 715000 That's the second week in, the, in a row for that. Um, only 58 wow. days on market and your average townhouse sold for 439,000, which is a little bit less than the previous week and not a whole lot going on in uh, the condo market, but. Well, Daryl and I know a lot about the condo market because we, we had a listing in the same building and it was quite the challenge to uh, sell it. It was one of those, you know, a little bit higher end buildings uh, downtown Kelowna. Um, and yeah, it was quite a challenge to sell it. How do you feel about what's going on in the market now? Do you think, Daryl, do you think people are um, still buying just because maybe they think something is going to happen with a lockdown? Or do you think, you know, what do you, what are your thoughts on what's going on with our, our, you know, high amount of buyers and low inventory? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's the inventory, it sucks, right? It's really tough for a lot of people. It's like, hey, we really want to buy something or I guess you would deal with this too, but it's, we want to sell our house, but we, there's nothing to buy. So it's like you're, you, totally. you get into the system and you're showing people like, hey, in your price range, let's pull it up. It's like, oh, there's two houses to choose from. So <laughs> not a lot of confidence yeah. in the inventory, which 
I would hope goes up a little bit in the spring, but I mean, with interest rates staying low, it's, it's tough to say how that's going to work out. But I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, they plan on keeping interest rates low for a couple of years, which should help. Cause I, I don't know that the real estate market's keeping up with the way the economy is going. So it's, it, it'll be an interesting spring. It's going to be really okay. interesting next year. Yeah. I did a search for a client, you know, they're averaging, they, they're looking up to 750 in West Kelowna and I think one house popped up and it had an yeah. offer. And it's just like the same story to everybody. And it's like, what do you, what do you say to these people? Like, we can't, you know, we can't be going to people's houses and well, actually some people do that. They go to people's houses and say, Hey, you know, I have a client <laughs> looking for your house. Um, but I think yeah. that's more of a sales tactic than um, actually looking for. <laughs> um, Why? Do you, do you guys think that more people are going to be maybe building their own house if they're not finding what they want in the market with inventory? I know. I had two accepted offers this week on land and that's because they weren't happy with what was out there in the market and they want to build. Okay. I, I thought... all, let's just give her a big congratulations. Cause she's only been licensed for not that long. And yeah. she did two deals nice. last week and I think one more coming. Oh, wow. So good job. Right on. Thank you good so much. You. Yeah. It's all, it's all downhill from here. Perfect. <laughs> give it, give it, you're excited now. Give it a couple years. You'll be jaded and grumpy. And I know, right? Actually, no, it's more like, um, it's like, a it's a weekly thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a weekly thing. You'll be excited one week. The ups and downs, the roller coaster. Like, mm, I'm not I, I was having a, when the new restrictions came in in December, I was having a slow couple weeks. So I phoned up Jesse and a few other realtor friends of mine. I'm like, Oh, you guys slow too. And everybody else was still busy. So I was like, Oh, maybe it's just me. Like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, gotta get working. It's different for everybody. Right. Like I have really busy weeks and then I have slow weeks where I pretty much just catch up on stuff and then do more, lots more prospecting. And then it kind of all evens out, but it's definitely like this. Yeah. yeah totally. That's just the life that we chose. It's just gonna I be find it's the life we chose. <laughs> Raina, you'll see this over the years of your career, but it's sometimes you have a bunch of cool listings piled up and a bunch of buyers. And then it, all of a sudden you, you, all your work and time and energy is on those people. And then they yeah. just all come off the books in one month. And then the next month you're sitting there with nothing to do. Right. So totally. it, we all uh, collapse. It, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like 50 and that's 50. when you go, that's when you go away on a trip for a weekend or something. That's the plan. <laughs> I've been actually thinking about going on one. <laughs> oh, no kidding. So, all right. Well, Daryl, you know what? We had you on today. Um, we think you're amazing. You do so much for the community. And we really wanted to talk to you about charity. Christmas is coming up. There's a lot of stuff going on. We're doing our 12 days of giving, which is on day four today. Slowly it's progressing. We're going to amp it up a little bit more. You're also donating to that, which we are really happy about. It's coming up in the next few days. So we can talk about yeah. that later. But so you're pretty big in um, donating and, you know, doing events and charity work and that kind of stuff. So tell us what kind of, what started that whole thing for you? So what, I'll, try to, I'll try to make this, I'll try to make the story as quick as possible. But um, basically when I, I started selling real estate around 22, I think I was, and I, I was part of a group called the JCs, kind of a young group of businessmen and, and we would put on different events and, and do different charity things. And the whole point of it was, us learning how to run events, us learning how to mobilize a group of people and as much as learning experience as it was helping out the community. And I, I just really loved doing it. And then we had, there was a realtor named Dave Johnson at Royal LePage years ago, uh, rest in peace. So he, around when I was around 22 or 23, he came down with ALS and we needed to throw a charity event for him, for him and his family. He had a couple of young kids and it's like, ALS is the worst. I just fucking hate that disease. And uh, so Francis, the owner of Royal LePage, came to me and said, you know, there's a few of you in the office that are capable of running an event. Can you guys put one together for him? So we raised this event and we raised, I think it was about $40,000 and we were able to buy him and his family a van so they could kind of navigate, oh, no. navigate the next couple of years. Sorry, the dogs are getting a little bit. So we, we bought him a van so they could navigate their life for the next couple of years. Um, and after that, it just kind of made me realize, like, I have, I have a bit of a gift where I can get people together, get them interested in a cause that I'm supporting and, you know, be able to call in favors for attendance to events or um, the cool part about that event. So there was a guy, this is a bit of a side story, but there's a local artist named Dave Watlin. I don't know if you guys have seen his stuff all over town, but he does really cool like rock landscape Creek kind of art. Mm -hmm. And he had painted this painting of four shadows going through a Rocky Creek. And that was to be auctioned off at the event and it was supposed to be Dave's family about the rough time that they were going through wow. and and I bought that I paid I think it was five or six hundred bucks to, to buy that at the event and it sat in my room 
for years. And every day I would see that and it kind of reminded me like I'm capable of doing this, which was huge for me. And I, that painting has since gone on to raise thousands and thousands for ALS and a few different fundraisers we did, but the, wow. and ever since then, I just, I just love doing it. Like I would, obviously I would want to be involved with organization and events that I believed in first mm -hmm. and foremost, but, but it was mostly the people, right? Like I, I would get Canadian mental health, uh, the SPCA like different organizations would get a hold of me over the years and ask how to run events more efficiently or raise awareness more efficiently and I just loved being a guy that could be counted on to do that so that's so kind of where it all came from you definitely are and you know so did you so you and Jesse are doing something now is that over yeah that's actually I, I gotta do an update on that today so we every year for the last six years I've done this charity santa pub crawl and we always start yes. the train station yeah and it's, it's awesome, awesome right there's 150 people dressed up like idiots in christmas costumes and <laughs> we raise a couple thousand bucks and we donate and we sponsor a few families locally so this year we we were doing that like we can't do the pub crawl but we each jesse and i each donated a thousand bucks still for presents but then we had um we went with the owners of train station pub and dave Lindsay there like train station pub is awesome they anytime we have a charity thing we always go to them and basically they just do whatever we want them to do and then help out. And they, so there's, we use Kelowna community resources for their Christmas hamper program. And they have 135 families this year signed up. So we joined up with the train station pub and they're cooking their four or five course Christmas dinner for all 135 families. So it's, wow, it ends up being 430 amazing. something deals, meals. Yeah. So we, we put it out to a bunch of realtors. They donated a bunch of money. And then we had this group. There's a couple of guys that live up here that are part of a charity group in Arizona called the Valley Guardians. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they, they're, they're a bunch of fairly affluent people and they have these events and they raise millions of dollars and all their money goes to local kids and that's their whole mandate. So they want to come up and start doing some work in the Okanagan. So they saw what we were doing and they, they gave us 5,000 us wow. for that. So yeah, so we've already raised like $9,000 in a matter of a week or so. So that's, that's actually amazing. enough to cover off all those meals. Yeah. So wow. just had to put in a couple like pointed phone calls and, and it gets done. So, yeah. So that's my next question. Like, is it, is it hard? Like, do you, like, obviously you said, this is a gift you have, you connect people and like, does it take away from your work and everything you do? Or is it just really a, a few phone calls and just being like, cause you got to ask, you just ask for it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of part and parcel with, with my work. Like a lot of people that I count on are you know, people in the industry that I partner with on different deals or different things, right? So it's talking to lawyers, financial people that I know, people that do business together, that we're friends together. It's like, hey, I need you to support me on this kind of thing. The problem with it is, is that I, I feel you only have a certain amount of asks per year. So it's, you know, I'm not going to come to you, Marika, and like once a month and say, hey, I need you to donate to this right. charity event because it's going to get pretty old, right? So oh, for sure. kind of spread it out. Plus they come back because every time I ask somebody for a donation, when it comes around a few months later where their kids are selling Purdy's chocolates or something at school. Like I, <laughs> I get that phone call coming back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. so you've made all these connections through your work with real estate and it's really like transpired into your charity work as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like they go part and parcel, right? Like the business community in Kelowna is fairly small. Once you get involved in it, Marika knows that too, right? So it's, you know, everybody's out there for each other and we all want to be successful over the years and help each other out whenever we can. And like, I think especially us as realtors, I mean, it's really important for us to give back to the community just because, I mean, the community gives us everything that we have, right? So it's uh, important for us to look, look out for them. That's awesome. Well, you yeah. know what? I never knew that story and that's really touching, actually. I'd love to see that picture one day. It's very cool. I think it's actually at Jesse's house now. Is so it? It's, cause I, well, so I woke up one day and Colin Bazaran, the mayor, gave me a call and said, hey, there's a lady in Kelowna or in West Kelowna that has ALS and wondering if you can help out and we want to do some fundraising for her. and I looked at that picture and I said you know what? I think this picture's done enough for me so I put it on an online auction and I think Jesse bought it for like $3,500 so we raised $3,500 I ended up becoming a really good friend of that lady before she passed um she they were doing an 80 kilometer bike ride for her to raise money and I, I went and bought a road bike and the very first time I was ever on a road bike was an 80 kilometer ride so <laughs> so we yeah well I was I definitely came last place it was <laughs> apparently it wasn't a race but coming in last it, place it sucked. wasn't about that <laughs> no, <laughs> no exactly um, so, since you kind of segued into the whole healthy you know doing a smoking a cigar and writing sorry <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about balance <laughs> yeah totally yeah yeah 
<laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> like I say, I didn't know I was going to be on video, but it's all good. Nobody, it's all good. You can have your cigar. <laughs> yeah. Where's your yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's actually down right beside me here. That's good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so I was going to ask you, cause I know you started, um, you're part of now. So you, you have generously donated some meals from your new venture, which is the restaurant. Yeah. That's black box. Yeah. Black box. And it's totally healthy um, meal planning, protein shakes, that kind of thing. Right. Do you want to maybe tell us they a little bit so about good. that? It looks yeah, good. Like, oh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's amazing actually. So Lonnie, Lonnie Van Dees, a good friend of mine, he, everybody in Kelowna knows him. He was in charge of Moxie's here for years and a bunch of other restaurants. And he had this idea where he wanted to do this healthy kind of meal prep, grab and go, you know, high protein, low carb, um, you know, just, just healthy, quick stuff. So just an alternative to fast food for people. Mm -hmm. yeah, obviously the health, the health food uh, sector is getting huge. So he had this idea and Greg Sabal came along board and Greg is, he actually has won a couple of Juno awards. He plays in Paul Brandt's band still and stuff. And he, wow. he, yeah, he's, he's so smart and so creative on the marketing side. So those two approached me and they wanted somebody that could get involved as a bit of an investor, but also that had a bit of a network that could, that could kind of help grow it. And it, the vision that those guys have is amazing. So it's been going awesome. It's been open for about a month or so now. And we got plans in January to start with the delivery program and that kind of stuff. So great. You know, I can't wait uh, to check it out. Yeah, you'll have to. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. the branding yeah. is just yeah. awesome. I love it. Yeah, I it's love really it. cool. That, and that's all Greg. Like he's so smart that way. Right. So that's fantastic. You'll have to yeah. expand to Penticton and South Okanagan and Vernon everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll be everywhere. That's <laughs> well, well, and especially like with more people not going out to restaurants on a regular basis right now, just with COVID and stuff, I think this is the perfect time to launch something like this. Yeah. Like it was obviously we had, like it had been in the works for about a year and we had to launch it at that time. So it was, a, mm -hmm. we were a bit apprehensive, but the support that we've got from people we know in the community in general has been pretty awesome. And, and yeah, I think it's a, it's a decent time for that where it's like, Hey, we can go grab something and bring it home and you know, it's healthy and it's not like, Be healthy. you know, ordering food online from one of these services and it's, yeah, I'm guilty of that. You know? I'm getting a bit bored of it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, there's only so many options. I knew I was in trouble when the skip the disc driver, he's been to my house, like the same one, like three or four times. And you know, oh, me by know. Name. it's like, that's probably not a good sign. <laughs> well, You're on like a first name like, basis. I just yeah. Hey, Daryl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. So it's a little bit, and you get your free, your first month of free deliveries. <laughs> oh, that's a good deal. Go to look into that. that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So Daryl, I have to ask you, because I was looking online and there was these rumors that you have a tattoo of a fire breathing unicorn. Is that, is that true? Yeah, <laughs> it absolutely. Is. And it's not small. It's not small too. No, so what's, we have, what's the story behind that? One of the charities I'm really involved in, and actually a friend of ours in Toronto started it across Canada. It's called Motion Ball. And there's about 15 events across Canada every year for Motion Ball. And the main one, it's called Marathon of Sport. So what it is, is it's, it's usually geared towards young professionals um, so they get teams attend together and they raise a bunch of money to go in this day of sports where every team gets a, a special Olympic athlete on their team. And that's obviously where all the money goes to. So we raise about, I think it's up over 2 million bucks a year across Canada for special Olympic athletes. And it goes towards wow. all their training and their traveling. It, it's such an integral part of, of them maintaining a, you know, a good, a good healthy life and, and being connected to other athletes and the community. So a uh, friend of mine, Derek Fear here, he's huge. He's huge. So he's the one that's a, that does it here every year. And our team has always been called the fire breathing unicorns. And so last year I put it out there. I'm like, if I get, if I hit 10,000 in donations, I'll get a fire breathing unicorn tattooed on my back. And I, I think I underestimated the amount of people I know that have money that like to see me do <laughs> stupid stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So it, was, it hit 10,000 in like two and a half days. I was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> should have rethought that but we ended up getting about 17 or 18 thousand so it was pretty cool like it was you got to look for unique ways sometimes and I don't suggest everybody gets a tattoo to do that but there's always <laughs> there's always there's always unique ways you can kind of think outside of the box rather than just you know hey here give me a pledge I'm going to do this event right so yeah. I love that I though you're yeah. so dedicated and I to literally I give up your back for it dedicated <laughs> <laughs> dedicated yeah that's the <laughs> I just um, I, was, I keep seeing this picture of you with half the half beard <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah that was another one you did this year right <laughs> yeah that well that's was like because when COVID happened my partner Dave Kotler and me we wanted to 
his wife's a doctor and we have a lot of friends and stuff that work at the hospital. So we wanted to do some, some fundraising for the KGH foundation to help out during that COVID time. And Krista McDermott, fellow realtor of ours, she, she hates my beard. So she's like, I'll donate a thousand bucks if you just shave it off. And then Laura Prosky and Christy, the other realtors, they were like, well, you shave half of it off and keep it for two weeks. We'll donate a thousand bucks too. And before I could say no, there was like another six or 7,000 had been donated. So I'm like, well, I'm doing this. And I, but the worst part is I kept forgetting it was there. And I like, I would be out in public and people would be looking at me funny. And I'm like, like, what's your problem? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like, oh, right. I only have half a beard on my face. I guess so. you could put like a mask over it half the time, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty bad. It was long at that time too. So it was like probably down to here. It was pretty, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was really long. <laughs> yeah. I guess what we'll do um, when we post our podcast, we're going to have to take some, get some pictures of your tattoo. We're going to have okay. to get a full list of all the things you do and uh, we're going to have to get a picture of that beard so I can show Brayna because she has probably hasn't seen it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, see that's it. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. you know what? I think that's, that's a wrap. Hey, I think we, you know, we're good. We had a really yeah. good interview with Daryl. Thank you so much for um, coming on. You can find Daryl on Instagram at Roots Real Estate and on Facebook. Is your team now just David Kotler and you? Yeah. Just, well, no, we have a few agents that work for us still with, yes. but it's just the Ruder Cotler team. And yeah. The it's, uh, team. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you're the best. Yeah. Thank, you so yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Hey, nice chatting with you guys. Yeah, nice chatting with you too. Have an awesome you. day. Okay. Have you too. Day. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.